And now let's take a look at oscillators. An oscillator is simply an amplifier gone bad. That is, with too much loop gain. The output voltage of this circuit, V sub O, is simply the input voltage, V sub N, times the gain of the amplifier, A sub V. Note that some of the output voltage is fed back to the input of the amplifier. The loop gain, the beta, is V sub F divided by V sub O. If beta is a positive number, then the circuit will oscillate. Three common oscillator circuits are the common base, the emitter follower, and the common emitter. The two most famous oscillator circuits are the Colpitts and Hartley. The Colpitts circuit is more stable but has a smaller tuning range. Remember the letter C for tapped capacitor and Colpitts. The Hartley is less stable but has a larger tuning range. It uses a tapped inductor. Remember the letter H for Hartley. Here is a Pierce oscillator using a crystal. The circuit is very stable, but only operates on one frequency. Microwave ovens use a magnetron as their high power frequency source. A magnetron tube is a diode. The anode is formed into a resonant cavity that surrounds the cathode. A strong external magnet creates a magnetic field inside the tube. Magnetrons are self-oscillating at a frequency determined by the dimensions of the anode. A gun diode oscillator also uses a resonant cavity to control the frequency of the generated signal. To do this, an amplifier is placed within the cavity. These devices are capable of operating at very high frequencies and were used more heavily before microwave transistors were developed. What condition must exist for a circuit to oscillate? A. It must have at least two stages. B. It must be neutralized. C. It must have positive feedback with a gain greater than 1. D. It must have negative feedback to cancel the input signal. Answer C. It must have positive feedback with a gain greater than 1. What are three oscillator circuits used in amateur radio equipment? A. Taft, Pierce, and negative feedback. B. Pierce, Finner, and Bean. C. Taft, Hartley, and Pierce. Or D. Culpitz, Hartley, and Pierce. The answer is D. Culpitz, Hartley, and Pierce. What is a magnetron oscillator? A. An oscillator in which the output is fed back to the input by a magnetic field of a transformer. B. A crystal oscillator in which variable frequency is obtained by placing the crystal in a strong magnetic field. C. A UHF or microwave oscillator consisting of a diode vacuum tube with a specially shaped anode surrounded by an external magnet or D, a reference standard oscillator in which the oscillations are synchronized by magnetic coupling to a rubidium gas tube. Answer C, a UHF or microwave oscillator consisting of a diode vacuum tube with a specifically shaped anode surrounded by an external magnet. And now let's take a look at mixers. Mixers actually multiply two signals together, generating two output signals, the sum and the difference of the frequency of the two input signals. If you mix an RF input signal, we'll call it F1, and the output of a local oscillator, F2, you generate an output at frequency F1 plus F2 and a second output at frequency F1 minus F2. Here is a typical passive circuit diagram for a ring diode mixer. The term 
ring refers to the shape of the four diodes. Notice how similar this looks to the schematic of a power supply full wave bridge rectifier. Here is an active circuit implementation of the ring diode mixer using two dual gate field effect transistors or FETs. What are the principal frequencies that appear at the output of a mixer circuit? A. 2 and 4 times the original frequency. B. The sum difference in square root of the input frequencies. C. The two input frequencies along with their sum and difference frequencies. Or D. 1.414 and 0.707 times the input frequency. The answer is C. The two input frequencies along with their sum and difference frequencies. What occurs when an excessive amount of signal energy reaches a mixer circuit? A. Spurious mixer products are generated. B. Mixer blanking occurs. C. Automatic limiting occurs. Or D. A beat frequency is generated. Answer A. Spurious mixer products are generated. Our next subject is signal processing. Digital signal processing is about rapidly sampling analog signals, recording the measurements as a series of numbers, processing those numbers, then converting the new numbers back to an analog signal. Note that the frequency of the sine wave being sampled is much less than that of the sampling frequency. On the top, you see the spectrum plot of the sine wave we are sampling. In the middle, you see the spectrum plot of the sampling signal that we are using to sample the sine wave. But what we get out is a complex signal, including the sum and difference signals around each of the sampling signal spectrum elements, as well as that of the sine wave we are sampling. If the sampling frequency is less than that of the sine wave we are sampling, the result is an output that retains the general shape of the input, but at a, low, a frequency lower than that of the frequency we are sampling. This is called aliasing. Here you can see where the original input signal was sampled at a lower frequency and produced a lower frequency output signal. This leads us to the Nyquist sampling theorem. The sampling frequency F sub S must be at least twice the frequency of the input signal to avoid aliasing. Here are some examples of commercial radios that use digital signal processing. What type of information can be conveyed using digital waveforms? A. Human speech. B. Video signals, C. Data, or D. All of these choices are correct. The answer is D. All of these choices are correct. What is an advantage of using digital signals instead of analog signals to convey the same information? A. Less complex circuitry is required for digital signal generation and detection. B. Digital signals always occupy a narrower bandwidth. C. Digital signals can be regenerated multiple times without error. Or D. All of these choices are correct. The answer is C. Digital signals can be regenerated multiple times without error. Which of these methods is commonly used to convert analog signals to digital signals? A. Sequential sampling. B. Harmonic regeneration. C. Level shifting. Or D. Phase reversal. Answer A. Sequential sampling. <laughs>